As the sun set, there were signs this night would be different from Thursday's blackout. With crews busy fixing power lines, each streetlight inspired some hope. But officials warned rotating blackouts could change all that. These planned outages will last approximately two hours and could occur uh, every 10 to 12 hours. And uh, they could uh, continue uh, throughout the weekend. Toronto's transit system was taking no chances, taking its streetcar fleet off the streets and replacing them and subways with crowded buses, at least until Monday, so that no one gets caught underground in a blackout. Still, where there was power, people were out to enjoy it. Just that the air conditioning's off, so we're, we're just frying in the house. I love it tonight. Like, I mean, it's great that the light, I would have liked it if the lights were off again. It would have been neat, but um, this is great too, you know what I mean? We still didn't have power when we left home about an hour ago. In turning the lights back on, priority went to essential services like hospitals, leaving some neighborhoods still in the dark, leaving Jofer Shahab frustrated. Can't go to the bathroom, hardly any water, just nothing, no light. He couldn't understand why his neighbors had power, but he didn't. These two buildings have got light, that building. Hey, light's back. Holy crap, light is back. Dude, light is back, man. That's it. That's my... Do my buildings not have light? No. Oh my god. Dude, my buildings have no light. Then, suddenly, his luck changed. Dude, I've got light again. Holy crap, thank God I can go home, watch TV, take a shower. The phone, the internet, oh. Police kept up a very visible patrol of the city. During the first night of the blackout, the crime rate spiked 12 times the normal number of break-ins. Police say last night was back to normal, even though the power supply wasn't, posing challenges for the city as the sun rose this morning. Mike Y, CBC News, Toronto.